y'all. Let me get a second for some people to load on, cause I, I really didn't tell nobody I was coming on. You know why? Cause I didn't, I didn't know I was coming on. I, I just got off work. I'm tired. I haven't even eat yet. I had an unofficial fast today, <laughs> and I had a word. So I had a couple people on here. Glory to God. And I wanted to get this little message real quick while it was on my heart. I'm gonna let people pile on in. Wave your hand, church. God bless you. Wave your hand, people of God. Say hi if you're watching. All right, I'm gonna just say a word of prayer and I'm gonna say what's on my mind. I'm gonna jump up out of here because I need to eat some food. Hey, Michelle, God bless you, woman of God. Dear Precious Heavenly Father, give this word. Give this word frankly. In the name of Jesus, give this word frankly. And speak prophetically. Give this word to set people free. Cover this woman of God, this, this servant, Lord. That I give this word. That's on my heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. They're my people. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. They're my big brother. Hey. All right, so I'm going to jump into this because I'm about to um, get this word and I'm about to eat. So listen, the Lord was really speaking to me on my way home about idolatry. Now, I'm going I'm to really help you out. Let me tell you what idolatry is. Idolatry is when you believe that someone is higher than God. Or something is higher than God. You give more attention to it. You exalt it. Or you give them the same attention as you would God. Alright? So that's idolatry. Something that you give the same attention as you would God. Something that you made of God. Something that you give the same amount of honor as God or higher. Alright? So when you put on God's status. Okay? That is idolatry. Now, God started speaking to me about the spirit of condemnation. Now, I was thinking, I don't know if y'all think randomly, but I was thinking about relationships. You know, I'm very interpersonal. interpersonal. I love one-on-one -on -one interpersonal relationships. And I started thinking about, you know, people in your circle, people who are not in your circle, things of that nature. And, you know, when God starts putting people in it and taking people out of your circle and things of that nature, he starts really trying to show you about idolatry okay and I was thinking about how over the years I've been in ministry for 22 years been preaching for 27 and I thought about how many times I have befriended people and they would look at me and say oh woman of God I love you I think you're amazing all these wonderful things and then when they get to know me they realize I'm human and I, I would see this look in people's eyes. It would be a shine in their eyes. And then if I make a mistake or um, I have real problems in my life or something like that, then they look at you all disappointed like, you know, Jesus ain't real or something. I'm just going to talk how I talk, okay? And I would think to myself for years, on and off, I would be like, Lord, how do I get delivered from this? How do I get delivered from that? How do I become better at this so I don't disappoint people? You know, because anybody who get close, they're going to see my humanity, right? And I started, you know, wondering all these years, I mean, all these years, I struggle with humanity. If anybody who's ever been in the church or even a leader would struggle with humanity, right? And I would teach for years and years and years, preachers are people, preachers are people, preachers are people. And today, the Lord told me, he said, well, when you ready to let go of condemnation, then you'll realize that that shame is not yours. That it really shows that those who were looking at you struggle with idolatry. They were looking for a God to worship because they did not have enough faith to see me. So they saw the power in you and decided to worship you and didn't know it, right? So they decided to worship you, but they didn't know they were worshiping you because their faith still is low. They're still immature in a lot of areas. 
I don't care how educated they are. I don't care how they can speak word. I don't care about any of that. I don't care how much scripture they can spit out. But the fact that they can't handle human flaw and pray for you in the areas where you struggle shows their immaturity and how they walk in idolatry. And so in order for them not to assume that role for that spirit of idolatry to stay there, it has to spit out condemnation in you. Because what you want is to serve me at your highest good, right? You want to serve me at your highest good. So it will push this button in you to keep itself veiled. So, because if the person knew that they were idolater, if they truly love me, this is what the Lord told me, if they truly love me, they would change. And they would begin to use the word to stop that spirit from being operative in their life. But instead, that spirit will veil itself and attack you with condemnation. So then here you are walking around feeling bad for being human. Spending days seeking me about how you can be better when the problem was the other person struggled with idolatry, right? Now watch this. This is interesting. So now as a person who has been hurt by the spirit of idolatry, it hinders that person, right? So now you become more um, isolated from people, right? And you now decide you have a vexed feeling about people. Uh, you know, people aren't real. People aren't this. People aren't that. So you now miss out on really great relationships you could have had because now you're afraid you might disappoint somebody. Right. And then you start developing perfectionisms and complexes of being perfect when God ain't never called you to be perfect at all. He called you to be usable. He called you to be a servant. He called you to be a worshiper. He called you to share his gospel, but he never, ever, ever called you to be perfect because he shed his blood for the perfection of humankind. Because he knew never in this world you was going to get it right. Never ever in this world you were ever going to get it right. So he shed his blood for you and sent the Holy Ghost to help you. Because he knew you were never ever going to get it right. Okay. And so because of that, you're overcompensating in areas that waste your time. When you could be reading the word and sharing it and be about your purpose and your destiny. Instead of worrying about people with judgmental issues. Worrying about people who need Jesus but looking for you the Jesus in you because they're too lazy to pray for themselves. Or looking for the Jesus in you because they ain't got enough faith. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And so they make their problems yours. So let's, 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 let's go on here and have, let everybody have their own problems. Let's just let everybody have their own problems. Let me help you church. Let me help you. Some of us, most of us who grew up in church, especially conventional ministries were taught idolatry in the church. Let me help you because we were taught how to honor the pastor in the wrong way. There's a difference between honoring and worshiping your pastor makes mistakes the leadership team makes mistakes makes mistakes the ushers make mistakes everybody in the church makes mistakes because everybody got flesh and everybody is human and jesus died for everybody let me help you so for that reason alone you can only worship the high, most high God, Yahweh, okay? You only worship Elohim. That's it. Because even the Bible says, don't put your faith in man. Don't put your faith in princes because we mess up. But put it in God because he right all the time, okay? Even when you don't understand, he right. So let me help you with this. We need to make sure... That we're not worshiping people. 
Let me help you. If your heroes disappoint you, work on your issues with idolatry. Now it's different. If they hurt you personally, then you forgive them, right? And move on. But if it hurts you in a way in which you don't want to ever have faith in something, if it hurts you in a way where you walk away from a career or hurts you in a way where you stop going to church, or if it hurts you in a way when you throw the whole situation away or throw whole people away or you throw whole families away, if it hurts you in a way that you never want to love again, work on the areas of idolatry. Because obviously people were sitting in places where you could not see them to forgive them. They were sitting in places way too high for them to destroy a whole people. It's, it's like somebody talking about, I don't like, but you, you dated somebody who was light-skinned. And then all of a sudden, all light-skinned people is bad. Look, we ain't got time for that. Deal with your idolatry. Deal with it. Just deal with it. Deal with it. Okay? Deal with your issues. Deal with it. Stop worshiping people. Stop worshiping things and worship God. We are called to forgive people and we are called to love them. No matter what they do to us, no matter what they say, we are called to forgive them. That don't mean they need to be all in your house. Don't mean they need to be all close to you. But it means that we have to work on forgiveness. Now, on the other flip side, don't you dare walk around with shame for something you done asked God for forgiveness for. That's number one. And second of all, don't you dare walk around for shame for stuff that regular people do. It's because you regular. Don't mean you need to be walking around with condemnation. Honey, I like to watch regular TV shows. I like to dance to regular music. I do more than Holy Ghost dance. I like to dance dance, okay? I like to enjoy myself. I like to live my life. I'm normal. I'm human, and I don't care how people feel about it. Now, listen, I'm about to help you. Stop having people making you feel condemned because you're human. Now, I'm going to tell you what's something that the Lord told me today. He said, daughter, what did you expect you to be? You're human, so you're supposed to act it, right? Now, I'm not telling you to be out here, be wretched. And terrible and not improve yourself and not work on your character. That's a daily process. But come on, you gonna make mistakes. You gonna make them. It's gonna happen. All right? You gonna make them. In this life, it's all about it. You're human. You have human needs, human desires. You human. Stop being ashamed that you're human. Stop. Cut it. Stop being ashamed of your humanity. What you need to do is look at the folk that judge you for your humanity. Pray for them to get their life together. Because they ain't so such a much that they don't need God either. Now, and stop putting expectations on people that you can't even be in. Now listen, get yourself together. Stop expecting people to be stuff you ain't. Well, you're so and so, so. So what? You called to be decent. You called to be fair. Stop putting people on these pedestals and be mad when they fall off. Let me tell you, everybody going to fall off a pedestal. So you setting people up for failure in your life. People are regular and people are normal. And let me tell you, their normality might be a little different from yours, but they're human. So stop worshiping people. Stop worshiping things. Things break. Seasons change. And people change. People are flawed. Decisions are flawed. So worshiping something with error is going to be a problem for you. So cut it out. And on the flip side, stop feeling guilty for stuff you just, you gonna do. You gonna make mistakes. Stop feeling guilty for it. Listen, forgive yourself. Ask for forgiveness if you sinned. And if you didn't sin, move on. Move on. And people who are not mature enough to sit down and, and, and allow you to be human and allow you to have problems. 
Because guess what? That's part of humanity. Everybody got problems. Oh, yes. And let me really teach you something. I'm going to really teach you, church. Guess what? The more anointed and powerful and successful you are, the more problems you have. I mean, Puff Daddy said it. The more money, more problems. Guess what? The more anointed you are, the more problems. The more popular you are, the more problems. The more problems. Okay? So stop expecting anointed people not to have problems. That's stupid. And it's immature. So cut it out. That's idolatry. That's idolatry. Stop expecting people not to have problems. Poor people got problems. Rich people got problems. Single people got problems. Married people got problems. People got problems. And the more anointed you are and the more people you help and the more good things you do for people, the stranger your problems are. Because there's always somebody hating on you because you're good. Somebody hating on you because you're loved. Somebody got issues with you because you're blessed. And so they, they inflict their own little issues on you. Okay? And the more prophetic you are, the stranger your problems are. And that's a whole different lesson. Okay? The stranger your problems are. King David has some strange problems. But Elijah the prophet and Elisha the prophet had much stranger problems. Moses had some real problems. Jacob had some problems. Everybody in that Bible has some problems. Stop looking at your pastor like they got problems. Duh. Do you read your word? Stop playing. Listen, can we, can we read our word and apply it correctly? Now, you might be like, I don't like apostles. She mean. Well, stop watching because I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it there. I ain't got nothing to prove, but the truth, I'm going to tell it. Grow up, church. Everyone has problems, and you ain't got to sin to get, get none. People passing out problems anyway. The devil passing out problems every day. That's what he do. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Everybody got problems. That's why we need prayer. Prayer. Mm -hmm. Pray for each other. Pray for yourself. And stop feeling guilty for stupid stuff. Forgive yourself if you sinned. And if people look at you like, uh, you know, like you, they Jesus, then they got the real problem, not you. So pray for them to get free. Stop trying to run away from people and not have relationships. Just pray for the people that get close to you. And if they look at you and, and, they, and they have their own issues, then they weren't meant to be with you right now. They were not meant to be with you. And that's just the truth. So you have to understand, not everybody is anointed to be in your circle. Not everybody has the maturity to hold your humanity without judging you. And all that's just fair. Do you understand? And sometimes people in your life for a minute, and when you elevate, you got to kick them out. And that's fine too. Ask the Lord to help you move with the seasons in your life. And ask the Lord to help you embrace your humanity and keep it moving. Because I tell you, there's, some lot, there's a lot of things you can repent for, but the lack of perfection is not one of them. You sin, you repent. That's it. But a lack of perfection is not one of them. So I just wanted to stop on by to give a word. I don't know how you receive it. I don't know. Some people say amen on here. God bless you. But I'm free today. I'm tired. Something happens when you turn 40 and, and plus. <laughs> you stop worrying about things. And move on with your life. So, I love y'all so much. I just got home. I told y'all I ate nothing on this unofficial fast. I'm about to eat. And I'm um, about to relax. I love you too, cousin. Hey, Tina. I love you. Y'all be free today. Don't you dare. Don't you dare walk around with no condemnation today. We ain't got time. Repent that one time and go on about your business. And work on your character. Be blessed. Become a better person every day. Be blessed. Stop judging people. And let people have their own problems. Hand their issues back to them. They do not belong to you.
Be free and be peaceful. I love y'all. Be blessed. Don't feel condemned. And for the most part, have a beautiful day. I love y'all. God bless y'all. I'm gone, y'all. Peace.